you. And with your spirit. O God, out of your love for us, you sent your dearly beloved Son to become man. You willed that he would be born in a humble stable in order to give us an example of humility. We pray you now to bless this crib, a representation of the scene of his birth. May it draw us closer to him. By imitating his humility, may we become a worthy dwelling place for his rebirth. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear friends, you're very welcome to our Mass for the Nativity of the Lord, celebrating the Feast of Christmas. May I, as I always do, introduce Brother Richard Madewell, who's a confrey here in St. Clement's. Alessandro, our young Italian film director, who puts all this together. And of course, our young married couple, <laughs> Giselle and Paul. Whoever you are, dear friends, wherever you are in the world, you are heartily welcome to our Christmas Mass. We begin asking the Lord, as he gifted his word to the world, may that word look upon us now with kindness and with mercy. Today a Saviour has been born to us. It is you, Christ the Redeemer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We sing a new song to you, O Lord, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We proclaim your help day by day. We tell among the nations your glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on, and on earth, earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in, in the, the glory, glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendour of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness has seen a great light. On those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater you have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as men rejoice at harvest time, as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on him, the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, these you break as on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, 
every cloak rolled in blood is burnt and consumed by fire. For there is a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid on his shoulders. And this is the name they give him, Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Wide is his dominion in a peace that has no end, for the throne of David and for his royal power, which he establishes and made secure in justice and in integrity. From this time onwards and forever, the jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response is, today a Saviour has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Today a Saviour has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. O sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. O sing to the Lord, bless his name. Today a Saviour has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Proclaim his help day by day. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Today a Saviour has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all it bears rejoice. All the trees of the wood shout for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he comes, he comes to rule the earth. Today a Saviour has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. With justice he will rule the world. He will judge the peoples with his truth. Today a Saviour has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. God's grace has been revealed and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race and taught us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God. And all our worldly ambitions, we must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, I bring you news of great joy. Today a Saviour has been born to us, Christ the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. The census the first took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and travelled up to Judea to the town of David called Bethlehem since he was of David's house and line in order to be registered together with Mary his betrothed who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. 
the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a great throng of the heavenly host praising God and singing, Glory to God in highest heaven and peace to people who enjoy his favour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear friends, when uh, an American playwright reflected on his childhood. He told the story of how his father, who was a telephone engineer, sometimes worked away from home. At first his father was only away for a couple of days a week, but gradually his absences became more frequent. They also lasted longer. Eventually, his father, he said, never returned home. The telephone engineer had fallen in love with long distance. His son had to live his life in the absence of his father forevermore. There was no word, no contact, no call. Just two things, silence, and absence. It's impossible to have a relationship with someone who is always absent and always silent. Usually we overcome our separation from those we love by staying in contact with them, keeping in touch through phoning or texting or writing or zooming, if that's the right word. And Christmas has become a traditional time, isn't it, for keeping in touch with our relatives and friends. Of course, the best way to keep in touch with absent family and friends is to visit them. The visit is the traditional way of conquering distance and overcoming absence. But in our present world, Visits can be seen as dangerous expeditions, risky undertakings, possibly catching the virus. The simplest courtesy, visiting our family or friends, spending time easily together, has now moved from a delightful courtesy to a dicey appointment. If it's difficult to live with the prolonged silence of those we love, it's painful to live in the midst of the silence of God. It was a truth of ancient religion that God was hidden, wrapped in silence. That silence was hard to bear and caused many people anguish of heart like the psalmist who prayed in desperation, Oh my God, I call to you every day, and I hear no reply. I call by night, and I find no peace. But God did speak. As the scripture says, at various times in the past and in different ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. Through God's chosen ones, the word of God broke through the silence and called on people. But who could have guessed 
that God would speak a word like Jesus. At the heart of Christianity is the belief that the most precious word of God became a person. The word of God became flesh in Jesus. The great silence of God is broken forever. So we can say with St. Paul to the Romans, I proclaim Jesus Christ, the revelation of a mystery kept secret for endless ages. In Jesus, we rejoice that God is more than silence. He is word among us. Just as the silence of God was hard to bear, so was the experience of absence. It was another truth of ancient religion that to be holy was to be separate, to be distant, to be absolutely, totally other. To be God was to be invisible. Nobody could see the face of God and live. True love can't really rest or relax in the absence of the loved one. It never becomes accustomed to absence, but starts seeking out the presence of the loved one. Like the psalmist who prayed, Of you my heart has spoken, seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face from me. It's a central belief of our faith that God did not hide his face, but revealed it in his son Jesus. That God did not stay separate and distant and invisible, but visited us in Jesus of Nazareth. In Jesus, the divine game of hide-and-seek is ended. Jesus is the icon of God. At Christmas, dear friends, we celebrate the consoling truth that God did not fall in love with long distance, but came among us in Jesus. You cannot save anyone from long distance. You have to be there. Jesus, in Jesus, God is here, close. And it is through Jesus we can pray, not only God in the highest heavens, not only Hosanna to the highest heavens, but Hosanna in the lowest. Hosanna to the one among us. God has a new address. He has pitched his tent among us. At Christmas we celebrate this wonderful truth that God is not wrapped in silence, but wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. For us and for millions of people since the birth of Christ, we have a new way not only of understanding life, but of living it. The Christmas story we hear each year, dear friends, is the same story. But we are different. Our world is different especially this year. Our memories have grown. Our hopes have been tested. Our love has been called upon, perhaps in new ways. But no matter what changes we have undergone, what losses we have endured, the Christmas story speak to us again of a new birth, and the possibility of our own rebirth. It tells us that things, things can be different. That's why each year, dear friends, at Christmas, 
we make our way back to Bethlehem to rediscover our roots in the gift of Jesus. For us, it is a journey home. G.K. Chesterton wrote, To an open house in the evening, home shall men come. To an older place than Eden, and a taller town than Rome. To the end of the way of the wandering star, to things that cannot be, but are. To the place where God was homeless, and all people are at home. Let us stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Word was made flesh. We praise the Lord for his goodness to us in giving us so great a gift. We bring our prayers to God on this joyous day. We pray for Pope Francis, all priests, and all priests, and ask that they feel loved this Christmas. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for families this Christmas who might not be able to spend time as they would choose. We ask that despite this, they experience joy, community, and have time to think about the true meaning of Christmas. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the homeless. We ask that their physical, emotional and spiritual needs are looked after at this time of year. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thank you, dear friends, for continuing to send in your prayer petitions. And I'll read out a few of them. Thank you, Richard. Dear Father Dennis, warm greetings to you and your wonderful team, Brother Richard, Alessandro and the beautiful married couple, Giselle and Paul. Merry Christmas to each of you with my thanks. I have never seen a sitting room become such a beautiful house chapel. You would never guess it was Catholic, would you? It's filled with colour and lights and saints and icons and plants, cheering our family up so much. We are Spanish from Seville and look and love all your warmth and hospitality. We would love you to pray in thanksgiving that both our sets of grandparents will continue to survive the pandemic. We have made the difficult decision not to visit them in case we endanger them, which is so hurtful to us. But we all agreed together that that was the safe thing to do. Please pray for all our families at this harmful time. 
Dear Father Dennis and your wonderful team, happy Christmas to you and all your loved ones. I have been watching your Mass for months, secretly. Mum and Dad don't know. They are lapsed Catholics and for some reason they're a bit angry with the Church. I don't know why. I am an unusual watcher, I suppose, being 17 years old. I love Jesus, but I am searching to know who I am, who I might be, what future I might have. I have no idea who I am or who I could be. Please, Father, ask your kind people to pray for me that someday I might grow into myself, whoever that might be. Dear Father Dennis, please give the Kerr family a shout. Alex was in ambulance service for 42 years and was called back during COVID-19. His three sisters, Mary, who holds the fort and is a wonderful woman, Agnes, who's a primary school teacher, Pauline, who just donated a kidney to a work colleague. May God bless them and you. Dear Father Dennis, Brother Richard, Alessandra, Giselle and Paul, may I wish my favourite mass team in the world a wonderful Christmas. I live alone in a tenement in Mary Hill, Glasgow. Both my son and daughter moved to Auckland in New Zealand six years ago, and they're very happy there. I am happy for them, but I haven't seen them in a year. I pray for all families who are separated this Christmas. I met you some years ago when you gave a wonderful day to our group supporting Mary's Meals here in Mary Hill. Could a lonely old woman make a strange request of your father? Could you just wish me? Could you just wish me happy Christmas? And that will make my day. Lots of love, Sarah. Let us pray. O oh, Father of all, we approach you on this special day and plead with you to listen kindly to our prayers. We pray for those who are enduring sickness, and loneliness at this time. Give courage to those who are oppressed at this time and grant to us all by acts of kindness and words of goodwill to spread the spirit of the one whose birthday we keep, your Son and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> Thank you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim, proclaim your, your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection, resurrection until, until you, you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I will say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
while I was a young priest, I had the great privilege of studying under a brilliant Jesuit professor at Fordham University in New York. This excerpt about Christmas comes from his book, The Unfinished Image. Christmas is a feast of sentiment. The problem is not that we lack sentiment completely, it is rather we sheathe ourselves so often in hard sentiments, anger, fear, revenge, indignation, grasping bitterness. The danger is we dam up in ourselves the wellspring of more tender sentiments, the ones of which the Christian liturgy is unabashedly full. We have to let ourselves feel more. In the spirit of this child, we have to experience other kinds of sentiments, other than our flinty ones. The world is full of such Christmases around us. The people who succeed were the innkeepers of the world fail. The people who nurse and fetch and listen and gather others into their quieting arms. The people who watch and wash the shaking decay of old age. The guard who writes a letter for a prisoner. The social worker who gives his lunch money to some joker of a client whose scars, after all, stand out most. The terrified teacher who coaxes an unhappy child closer to, oh, what possibilities. The people who bring funny jokes into the grim halls of hospitals, orphanages, clinics, prisons. The priest who apologizes for coming up empty-handed in someone's spiritual need. The ancient grandmother who climbs unsteadily once more into the harness. Why? Who else will care? The soldier who runs with, yes, a child to safety. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity may through an honourable way of life become worthy of union with him who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you and keep you the one who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Christmas Mass is ended. We go glorifying the Lord by our life. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, stay well, stay safe and stay generous. And again, a heartfelt thank you to the lovely people who are helping us here at Redemptor's Publications to continue our charitable mission. So we would like to say to you, have a very, very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. There you are from us all, isn't that wonderful? God bless you and we go in peace.